right, so we have the a little glare back here. You can see me kind of like shadow dancing. So we have 2023, what worked, what didn't work, and 2024. I'm going to talk to you about the great experiment after we go over this and talk about the future of Second Spring Naturals. Thanks for joining me. Um, we're going to sit a little bit in the studio today. I should turn my lights on. Let's turn them on. You know, I feel like I just did um, so much work making this studio really pretty. It's hard to see because it's it's like a pale pink um, right down to the silhouette. Um, I painted all of this furniture. It's all, you can see it in a studio tour. I kind of, you know, um, repurposed a lot of things. This is just like $3 fabric from Walmart that my husband recovered this already repurposed chair. This is my um, great, great grandmother's desk that, that I believe came over from England. Um, it has a porcelain top and I've been using that ever since. I just put a new knob on it and I love this studio. I've got the soap samples that need to go in sample sets. Um, I even love these prints on the wall. I'm feeling a little nostalgic right now. We're going to talk about some hard things um, and talk about, you know, what things you're going to potentially like in 2024, depending on really what happens. I should put these lights on too, but um, I didn't think this through very well. I should have hung them up in a way I can just kind of snatch them off the, the wall and turn the lights off, but that didn't work so great. Um, I've got our card rack for all of the gift sets and, you know, in so many ways, this has been um, a wonderful year, but it's also um, a time of transition. It is almost 10 years in business. It will be in August on the 14th. So let's talk about some. Hey friends, so let me get this out of the way here. We have some room, some creams that need to get jarred. All right, so we're gonna talk, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, 2023. I like to do a year in review. I noticed that the video that I did last year is one of my most popular videos. Um, you know, it's kind of like a vulnerable, honest look at the year and what has worked, what hasn't. And I was kind of in this place of, you know, wondering what I wanted to do with the business last year. And to be honest, I'm still more or less in that place, but I have a solid plan now with a deadline. So let's talk about 2023 first. I think it's been a hard year um, for a lot of small businesses. Some of the shops that sell my soaps have actually closed, which is really unfortunate. Um, that hasn't happened before, but I, you know, a couple of local shops have closed. Uh, one continues to do really well for me. Um, I've been monitoring all of the sales over the holiday, but I'm still a little behind last year's um, revenue from that. Um, but I can, I can look at one of the um, successes of 2023 as my main consignment shops. So not wholesale consignment. Um, these are the shops that I have been with for many years. I have loyal customers and followers through them, and I have continued to make a profit by selling with them. I also really love the relationship with these other women in business. Um, so that's number one. Wholesale, I'm, I'm not doing anything with wholesale. I have a lot of stores, but the orders are not consistent. Um, I'm not doing any more outreach because um, just cold outreach via email, etc. It doesn't really work unless I go into a store with my products. Um, it's it's really just kind of like mass marketing. They're getting emails and things all the time. Um, I had even attempted, you know, sending out um, samples to stores so they would have them. But as you can imagine, that can be pretty expensive to, you know, to do all of the mailings that you would have to do in order to get a handful of really good stores. So wholesale was, um, was I don't want to say failure. I'm going to say um, wholesale is something that is no longer a priority at all. Um, I still have platforms on FAIR, on Tundra, all the places, but this year was a bust. Um, compared to other years, I've barely gotten any orders and I'm not counting on that at all. 
So wholesale, no. Consignment, yes. If you wanna talk more about how I've been successful in consignment, I'm happy to do that. But I need to have comments on the videos um, because that leads me to number two, which is YouTube. You know, my videos are not fancy. I don't have any fancy editing. I'm working right with um, from an iPhone. I had bought a camera and the video quality was awful. It just didn't work. Um, and I'm just not, I'm gonna stick with the basics, um, but I had hoped to grow my YouTube channel, which I really did this year compared to the video before. I have the subscribers, I have what I need for uh, monetization, except for some of the view hours. So if you're able to watch some videos, I would appreciate it. Um, that still remains a focus, and I'll tell you how that's gonna factor into 2024. Um, so YouTube has been, has been pretty good and will remain in the plan for 2024. So, so far we've talked about wholesale and consignment, wholesale no, consignment yes, but please do comment and talk to me here. Um, you know, I'll get messages via email and, and so forth to answer questions about videos and what I really need is the engagement in my videos. That's where I'm going to spend my time and, and answer your questions and help you, whether it's recipe questions or ideas for videos. Um, you'll go back to my videos. You'll see I answer all of the comments. So please, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, subscribe to my channel and comment. Hit the like button, help me out with that, and I will respond. I always do. I have been for a long time. So YouTube continues to be a yes. Um, events, I stopped doing events, and that was a really scary thing for me because I had um, narrowed it down after all of these years to specific events that were fairly big. I had great customers. I did really well. But as every handcrafted business owner will tell you, it's not sustainable in the long run because it's physically and mentally exhausting to do them. So I just decided to cut the events. Um, did it make a big difference on my bottom line? I don't know that it made that big of a difference. So that was a good decision um, and I will continue to not pursue events in 2024. The next thing on the list is the business to customer sales. So selling direct to customer, right? Um, the opposite of wholesale really where I'm selling direct to my customers through my website through Etsy. So let's talk about the website first. Um, the website has been fine. It's been up for a really long time. Um, again, it's been almost 10 years. I still have a Shopify site. I always have orders coming in, but this year the revenue is not where I needed it to be. I also didn't do a lot of outreach because I went back to full-time um, work. And I talked about that in a different video. If you want to know more about my day job, um, I transitioned out of a 21 year um, education career and in higher ed and, um, and in schools and I'm doing something completely different now. I really love it. And I'm really grateful for it because if I had just allowed the business to try to sustain me much longer, it would not have been, it wouldn't have ended very well for me or my family. Um, so, Business to customer has has been okay, but um, if you go to my website right now, you'll see it's closed for the first time in almost 10 years. It'll be 10 years that I've been in business in August. So it's the first time I've ever just closed the website. I put it on hold. Um, everything's still there behind the scenes, but you can't order and I'll get to why. So uh, there's the, the website, the Shopify site, and then there's Etsy. So Etsy, as you know, is it's tricky. It is not just me. Um, I walked around a show that I used to do, um, a Christmas market that I loved and, and did really well at. And I decided this year I was going to walk around, sip some old wine, and I was going to buy handcrafted gifts from vendors that I knew there um, and some that I didn't and bring them to Germany and give them to my son. And that's what I did. While I was doing that, um, you know, some of them would ask me, are you still on Etsy? Are you still selling there? And they I'm going to give you an example of one shop. Um, she has the most adorable, and I'm going to have to find like her, her link to her website because she doesn't have an Etsy shop anymore. And it's a real shame because her items are what Etsy should be made of, um, is sellers like this. They are hand felted dogs, every kind of dog breed. They are immaculate. They are exquisite. Um, she does beautiful handcrafted work and her display is amazing. And if you look at that, you would say that's what Etsy should be. But Etsy, as we know, has welcomed in people selling with wholesale 
crap from overseas, from wherever, and it's just gotten flooded. So it's it's not what it used to be. Um, it's, it's oversaturated. People will say, oh, you can still do well. Yeah, you can still do well. And I did experiments with beautiful pink gift boxes with you know the gold vinyl names on the top, um, but I still can't get the reach that I need. So with all of the things that I have available on Etsy, I would be working so hard to like make all of the things for all of the, you have to have like a thousand listings, I, I'm telling you, to, to be able to even penetrate um, this, this vast market that is Etsy now. And as far as their algorithms and everything else, like I'm not dedicating full-time work to trying to figure that out for it maybe to work. So as far as Etsy, it's, it's still there, but my shop is on vacation. I was always terrified to put my shop on vacation because I heard that would completely slow everything down. But you know what, at the end of this year, I didn't care. I put it on vacation, I haven't looked back and I have no regrets and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it and I'm going to take my time deciding. Um, so business to customer direct through Shopify, through Etsy. What will happen with the Shopify site? Well, I had given myself a temporary deadline or a tentative deadline, I should say, of December of this year. I talked to my husband about it. I said, if I don't have the profits that I need, if I don't have the engagement that I need, I'm not going to put a bunch of time anymore into doing things like social media. Like um, you don't see my posts now on Facebook, on Instagram, because it wasn't getting me anywhere. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit, but <sighs> suffice it to say, you have to really kind of choose one, one um, platform. And for me, that really should have been Instagram. I'm not good at showing up daily and posting reels and all of these crazy videos and like doing all of these fun things and dancing around. I'm not going to be that person on Instagram. I never will be. I have trouble enough just getting pictures to put up. I hired someone to do that for me. It worked pretty well. The channel kind of grew or the, you know, my channel there grew a little bit, um, but not enough to continue to pay somebody to do it and to do the work behind the scenes that it required. So I just stopped posting on Instagram and put a note that said, come over to YouTube. Um, as far as the Facebook page, you know, there's not a whole lot of engagement there. I have a Facebook group and I am continuing to talk to my customers directly there. Um, that will remain and will be part of the plan for 2024. But in terms of like social media and you know my husband said you're spending all of this time trying to trying to create like these videos and things like that but like how much engagement are you actually getting and when I looked at it he was right um why am I taking time away from my family when this is not working for me so I immediately I think that was early September just stopped didn't matter what happened I just stopped it I continued to post on YouTube it continued to grow so this gets us to where we are today. And if you want a tip as far as social media, I would say pick one platform, whatever works for whatever niche or product or service you happen to be um, selling. And you have to be there constantly. You have to show up like, I would say multiple times a day. You just have to be in people's faces constantly and get like a massive following um, in order for that to work or like, why bother? And for me, it was why bother? Um, if I couldn't put in the 100%, which I can't, it's, I'm not a natural at it, then I just wasn't going to. All right, so enough about that. 2024, what does it look like? I just sent out an email to my customers and I'm putting this out here now too. I spoke to my customers in my Facebook group um, and I let them know that the plan is, it's a tentative plan, but it has a hard deadline and that is the end of the first quarter. So here's what's going to happen. My website's going to remain closed until March. In the meantime, I will be here on YouTube making soaps that I'm completely out of. Um, I surveyed all of my customers. They told me what it is they love, what they buy. It gave me a great starting point. So I will be making specific products, you know, including of course the bar soaps and some mini creams and soap ends and some other things that I'll share as I go between January 1 and the middle of March. As I do that, I'm going to post videos of everything I'm making and I'm going to talk about the things that are upcoming, the holidays, um, Easter, things that you want to, you know, stock up for, for gifts. Um, of course, the, my stores that continue to be profitable will 
still get everything they need. The things that I'm making are still things that go to them as well. And then they like to get extra things that I'm doing for the group. Um, so I'm going to do that up through March and I'm going to keep posts in the group and I'm going to remind everyone here that mid-March I'm going to do a launch and the website will open and everything that's in there I hope sells out. That's my goal. I don't want things left over because after that couple of days or whatever it takes it will not be more than a week that it will be open. Um, I'm going to shut the website again. Whatever's left goes to my stores. But I'm hoping that the online engagement is there via YouTube, sharing it to my email, sharing it to my Facebook group will come through and work. And I have very supportive customers, many of whom have become friends, who have sent me texts today and said, hey, I'm here for you. I'm supporting you in whatever you want to do. I'm always here, whatever. I, I think this could work. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and it will make it kind of manageable for me, more sustainable for me. Um, there are some products like whipped soaps that I'm bringing back because there's just been such a high demand, um, but they're going to be available when they're available. And then we're done until the end of quarter two, which would be in the summertime. So ultimately my shop would only be open like four times a year. And this is something that um, a lot of, people on YouTube, soapers that I've watched over the years, that has been their complete business model is to keep things closed and just make make all of the things and then open it up and everybody kind of rushes to, to get things because what they want is there for a limited amount of time. If it sells out, it's gone. Um, I've actually, you know, bought a couple of things from other soapers and, you know, jumped online during these launches because they're fun, they're exciting, and then found that everything was sold out. So I think it can be a really good model if it works. So I know these things take time, but I just don't have it right now. And I don't really have, I don't want to say the patience, but I don't have the bandwidth. I don't have the emotional stamina anymore um, to continue if it does not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it my all. Um, I hope you hang out with me here as I'm making things. I can answer questions that you're asking. A lot of um, the subscribers here are other soap makers. So ask the questions, say, I'm trying this. It's not working. What do you think? You know, I've been doing this for a long time. I really do know what works, what doesn't, and what could work now, just because I'm not going to be willing to post on social media a million times a day, doesn't mean you couldn't easily do that. That could be your gift. That could be the thing that you do that really drives sales for you. Um, ask me questions about ingredients. I love jumping in and doing that. So maybe even some of the the videos that I do of these products that I'm making, I'll do in like a live stream and, and we can answer questions kind of live as we go. Um, or maybe I'll do a video or two in between where I just do a live and answer questions. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. I'm really hoping it's a success because the alternative is kind of sad for me. I don't want all of this to go away. I had big dreams for this. Um, and I think in order to, to scale all the way, you have to be willing to put everything into it. Um, you know, and for me, that would have been like a warehouse where I had a team making things and we went like really hard on, on wholesale and getting into big stores and, um, not necessarily shark tank, but that kind of thing, like getting investors and, and things like that have happened over the years. Um, opportunities, um, QVC opportunity came up, you know, but you, it has to be one big thing. And is that what you want? Is that all that you want to focus on? And I never really did just want to focus on that. I really love the engagement with my individual customers and that's what it has kind of come down to. So I'm going to leave this video here. Please watch for the next video. You should see one again every week. And the next video will have me, um, making the first product for the mark the March launch. And again, in the meantime, please leave me questions because if you leave me questions, what I'll do is I can address some of those. I can, you know, print them out or, or, you know, have them down, have them on my phone while I'm, I'm working and I can answer those questions for you. But I hope you all have a really prosperous 2024. If you are a soap maker, please don't give up. Don't let this um, deter you in any way. This is my story. Um, and, and we're all very individual and you should always be prepared, pre prepared um, to, to go in for the long haul. 
Um, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the goals that I have set for myself um, in terms of my other job, but it's just too big of a video to do that all at once. All right, so happy new year to all of you. Thank you for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.